you found yourself in inclement weather and in a survival situation. In the following video, we will be demonstrating the correct methods to construct and build a long log fire. Now making a fire in the wild is always something you want to be very careful with, especially of this magnitude. But if you're in a survival situation in really cold conditions, a long fire like this can give you heat all the way through the night and save your life. Let's show you how we built this one. So there's four resources that we're going to need to start this long log fire. And the first is our ignition source, which is birch bark, which is a waterproof tinder source. The second resource we're looking to collect for a long log fire is our small fuel. And with that, we're looking for small sticks, toothpick size to pencil size thickness, as anything bigger will suffocate your fire. So the next level of fuel that we're trying to collect is our medium. And our medium is after we've actually got the ignition of the fire and it's already starting to go. And we can establish it by putting a little bit heavier, a little bit thicker wood on to give it some more life before we add in the last step. When you're looking for your fuel for your fire, you're going to want to go with hardwoods that are dead and dry, but also easily accessible. Because you're only going to have a knife maybe to cut this and your body. The last resource that we've had to collect today for our long log fire is our large fuel. We've also been using full size hardwood trees as we're only limited to our knives as tools. So we'll be burning the entire tree and moving it in as it burns. So what we've done so far is laid a bunch of smaller perpendicular logs underneath our long logs. This keeps the long logs off the ground and allows oxygen to move in underneath. The second stage is filling the crevice in between the long logs with our medium and small fuel fuel being our, our branches and our twigs here. We want to make sure this is still a little bit loose and fluffy so that oxygen can move through that as well. One of the other things you want to consider is your wind direction. Right now the wind is coming straight at us and it's going to push the, the smoke out that direction instead of right at us at the shelter. So, uh, so now Zach's mixing in a little bit of the birch bark which is going to be the easy to ignite fuel. Uh, birch bark is one of the only natural materials that will burn even when wet. So Zach's mixed in about 98% of the birch bark into the fire lay and keep in a small amount of it to do the ignition. Zach must be getting hungry because he's working really fast. <laughs> So especially in the winter time when there's been a mixture of freezing rain and snowfall, it's good to get some nice dry wood from inside of a wood source. You can do that by splitting it up and making a feather stick. I'm just taking my knife and toughing up the birch bark so it's easily ignitable with my ferrocerium rod. So a ferrocerium rod is a synthetic alloy and when striked against a hard metal edge, it can produce sparks around 3000 Celsius. These are often found in survival kits because they can produce enough sparks to create a fire even when extremely cold or wet. Now, of course, if you have a lighter or matches, that would be a simpler solution. One thing you'll learn about doing fires in the wintertime is uh, it's not actually going to really start hearing that wood start to crack and snap because that tinder will light real quick and it can also go out just as quick. Some of you might think there's no reason to add more logs to an already roaring fire like this, but these will actually dampen it down a little bit and catch on fire. And these are going to be that long lasting hot coals that give you heat all the way through the night. 